over the last few weeks to months or so, and a short, of course, shout out to DETV, this DETV segment of Team Media Radio, where we've been, you know, um, inviting various um, political candidates to the show. We've been discussing various things, their platforms, what they plan on doing, changing things in the, in, in the capacity in which they'll serve, should they be elected to such said offices, things of that nature. Of course, we've been interviewing a lot of mayoral candidates, we've interviewed city council candidates, and today, we have somebody new for y'all. We have a new office for y'all. We got a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn. Uh, this this young lady right here, she's running for lieutenant governor, Democratic lieutenant governor of the great state of Delaware. Uh, she's a Delaware native. I'm going to get into the other, the, 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 the small degrees of separation in a second. After we introduce her, we're going to kick her feet up on the couch with everybody else, grab a drink, you know, hang back with the crew. We're going to have a good old time. We're going to learn some things about the lieutenant governor. We're going to learn some things about her. Please, one time, y'all, give it up. Catch me, get us to the building with Team Nitty Radio. How you doing, Mr. <laughs> Very well, thank you. That's good to hear. That's great to hear. Now, I'm going to ask you, like I ask everyone else that comes into this show, for the people that don't know, who is Kathy McGinnis? Kathy McGinnis is a Delaware uh, native, mm -hmm. born in Kent County, raised in Sussex, mm -hmm. a working mom of three, city commissioner, my 14th year, Rehoboth Beach, mm -hmm. Founding president of the national award-winning uh, nonprofit Rehoboth Beach Main Street, which okay. helped reshape and recreate the beach area mm -hmm. and create jobs. Um, and uh, what else? I can tell you, I've had two small businesses. I'm a realtor and a pharmacist. Okay. So, all right, we're going to cover some of these things. So, first of all, okay, um, just like uh, a brown eye perspective uh, host right here, uh, you're a Cape Pen Open. Yes. As well. yes. Go Vikings. Okay. Go Vikings. Delaware native. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, born in Kent, raised in Sussex. Yes. Okay, so the roots run deep, and you just mentioned you know some uh, Tracy's people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there was more. So, now, all right, let's get this straight now. Uh, business owner. Yes. Pharmacist. Yes. Uh, you have a bio the biology degree, too, right? Yes. So biology and mm -hmm. pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're home with Beach Commissioner. Yes. How does all this, how does all this now become, I want to be a lieutenant governor? Well, I, I tell people when they ask me, why did you choose that office? Mm -hmm. I said, it chose me. Okay. Timing is everything. And I have the experience of the nonprofit. I have the experience of the municipal. And I know how to run a business. Okay. I know how to balance a budget. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know how to hire folks, uh, bid out insurance, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And okay. what we need now in Delaware mm -hmm. are jobs. Okay. And I understand that. Okay. So what I bring is not only experience, but results, okay. real life results. Now, with that said, I'm going to backtrack a little mm -hmm. because, of course, if you hear the word governor, we just think of the governor. Correct. We don't think about lieutenant governor, things of that nature. And people generally, you know, I guess for, for the most part, they feel they know what the role of a governor is. Now, what is the role of a lieutenant governor? The, the lieutenant governor presides over the Board of Pardons. Mm -hmm. And also, in the event there is... Um, a, a tie that needs to be broken in the Senate, mm -hmm. they break the tie. So they pr preside over the Senate and the Board of Pardons, two very important um, decision-making jobs. And, you know, one of the jobs presiding over the Board of Pardons is mm -hmm. life-changing. It, right. it, it affects a whole family, <coughs> an extended mm -hmm. family, whether someone can get a job, mm -hmm. depending on the record, or can they uh, excel in a job. So it's, right. it's very important. And uh, you need someone who's strong and decisive, who will listen to all sides and make a decision. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so now let's, we're going to jump right into it now because, you know, one of the things we have – I've discussed, well, we've been discussing it mainly with the mayoral candidates and some of the city council candidates down in the city of Wilmington, of course. Mm -hmm. It's been about, um, you know, crime, has been about the penal system, mm -hmm. it's been about what happens after you get out, mm -hmm. avoiding recidivism, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So now, when we think about the part of when you actually get out of, you know, when you're free from incarceration, you serve your time, or what have you, and I, this term comes up a lot. Um, which is uh, pardons, trying to get pardons, okay? Correct. You hear about pardons expungements, uh, you know, a lot in the field that I used to work in. I used to work in human so services. And, you know, one thing that I always hear about is how difficult it is to actually get this pardon. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, truth be told, a lot of times people don't even know the steps it takes to even begin to apply for a pardon or, you know, petition for a pardon or things of that nature. Correct, so, correct. First of all, if you could give us a quick synopsis of what a pardon is, and how one goes about getting it, and then we'll go from there. Um, well, what will happen is, and I sit in the Board of Pardon meetings in Dover okay. um, in the audience, but, but what happens is, um, let's say you, you have an opportunity and mm -hmm. you have a record and you want to get that um, expunged or you, you, there's different pathways to go through. Right. Okay, so one of them is a pardon, and this board 
of five mm-hmm. will sit there and listen. And they also have, you know, there's an attorney. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people that are going before the Board of Pardons also will have an attorney or somebody with them, okay. counsel. And there's recommendations that's made. Then this board makes their decision, sometimes right there. Sometimes they have enough information in front of them. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they go back in the chamber and discuss. uh, And they come out, they actually don't pardon. They make a recommendation to the governor. Then the governor makes the pardon. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, and you said you sat in on them. Mm -hmm. You sat in on them. So, of course, I guess you've seen whether someone gets, you know, recommended for a pardon or whether they get told they're not going to be recommended. Maybe try again. Yes. Make some changes. Yeah. Again, a lot of the rumblings are it's so difficult to get one. If you feel that's the case, why is that? Why is that the case? Um, because <clears throat> and, and before you go on, because let's I'm gonna go into role play here. I'm okay. Joe Schmo, okay. I'm on the outside looking in. Well, hell, if a guy or a woman, guy, or gal's done their time, you know, they served their time and they've stayed out of trouble, they did their probation or whatever, paid their fines or whatever they needs to do. Why can they? Why is it still that they might get turned down for this part? It, you know, what each case is different. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, uh. Someone might have done something 15 years ago or, or they were, you know, under 18. You know, we're, we're different people mm-hmm. from when we're a teenager. You know, we grow right. and we change and our perspectives change as mm-hmm. we get older. So um, I think when there's a longer time, okay. it's it's different than when someone just did something. They keep having repeat offense, repeat mm-hmm. offense, repeat offense and uh, come and ask for a pardon. And it right. could have been as early as a few months ago. Mm-hmm. It, your, your chances haven't seemed so... Uh, positive of getting a pardon i think but you you have to everybody's different every situation's different mm-hmm. the time factor the, the crime factor mm-hmm. so a lot of these things go into account okay. what i'd like to see uh-huh. what i've proposed is to look at look at the demographics look who's coming before the board of pardons mm-hmm. and then perhaps get two public members mm-hmm. that can relate right that someone who's going there can relate to, okay. to as well and I think that might balance out the board as well. Now, as the lieutenant governor, is that a, a change you would, you would be, I guess, within your authority to petition for? Um, I could advocate for it, but it would have to be a change. They'd have to change the constitution, which you could do. Okay. I mean, legislators mm-hmm. uh, make and change and amend laws all the time. True. So now we won't get hung up on pardons because, of course, okay. you know the the role of the lieutenant governor runs you know much broader than. Sure. That. So now, in speaking with candidates, every candidate that we've spoken to regardless of whatever office they were running, Mm -hmm. they all felt like there was some change needed within the office that they're running for. You know, um, some sort of change. Like, for instance, uh, I'm not sure if you you probably have heard about it, because, again, small world, smaller state. The race for the mayor of Wilmington, you know, everybody's mentioning some kind of change that needs to be done within that office or that administration, whether it's because of the crime situation or, you know, uh, economic reform, education, ABC, XYZ. Right. So now, here we are, Lieutenant Governor. Mm-hmm. What is it that you feel can be changed for the better if, if Kathy McGinnis is voted in as Lieutenant Governor? Okay, so whoever gets voted in, you have those two defined duties, okay. hands down. That's what you do. And right. then you can come in and advocate for something else. Mine would be jobs, economy. There's a lot of moving parts. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have three counties. I look at Kent, Sussex, Wilming, uh, Wilmington, and Newcastle. Okay. So it's almost like four different entities. They all have challenges. Right. They all have successes. And and they need to be addressed, but we need to also start looking at Delaware as one, okay. as one large community instead of, oh, well, you're from there or, or your problem doesn't matter because I'm in Sussex. Yes, it matters what's going on in Wilmington. It should all matter because mm-hmm. um, there really aren't any boundaries. We're, we're pretty small, and by some mm-hmm. standards, we're as, the same as a, you know, a county in another state. What I would change... Um, I, I would advocate for jobs, et cetera, but I'd also like to establish maybe a fund or put resources aside mm-hmm. for different programs. Okay. Again, each lieutenant governor works and um, is the support system for the governor. Right. So hopefully we have alignments mm-hmm. where the governor could say, you know what, yes, go ahead, get some key talent together mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the best and the brightest and work on a particular issue. Okay. It, so now it's funny that you mentioned jobs because, you know, when our when I'm watching the news or reading the news, you know, I get some of my best news off of social media, by the way. I'm not afraid to admit that. Sure. Um, you know, you hear about, okay, let's take DuPont, for instance. Mm-hmm. We're cutting X amount of jobs, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to cut a trillion jobs this month over the next two days. Of course, I'm exaggerating. Right, right. So we hear about these job cuts, especially from these big companies. But then now how, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the outside looking in it again. I'm with Joe Schmoke. How am I to believe that you can help create jobs if... You know, one of the biggest employers out here is cutting jobs. 
Well, what we need to do is we need to start thinking outside the box mm -hmm. because the big, the chemicals, the cars, uh -huh. the chickens, those things are changing. And it's not all big business. We have to start thinking technology plays a huge role in the job market today. So that, that cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. But there are opportunities. The key thing is to make sure you have the skills if that opportunity arises because there's nothing worse than having the opportunity and not being able to take it. Yeah. As far as jobs, um, the reason me because I've had two small businesses but as a founding president of Rehoboth Main Street mm -hmm. 20 years ago and you two know this my Cape friends over here mm -hmm. Rehoboth was a different place mm -hmm. and if you go back further when I was a child you could walk in the middle of the road after Labor Day okay, okay. there so when I opened my pharmacy I said my gosh there's 17 empty storefronts there's mm -hmm. a defunct business association we have these things on the highway mm -hmm. called outlets popping up in this new thing called online shopping what's going on <laughs> right. to survive what are we going to do mm -hmm. so we helped grow the season grow jobs and if you go down to our area now which is booming mm -hmm. it's year-round okay. there are lights on there's business open there's you can go to a particular restaurant in the middle of the middle of the winter and there's a wait Mm -hmm. So, um, so it, that, it's a different day, and that was from hard work. So is that part of what you accomplished at the Rehoboth uh, yes. Beach Commission? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. 14 so, years I've been there. So now, and, and that's a lot of change. Now, you know, I've been in Delaware for a while. Now, I'm not going to sit down like I'm an expert of Rehoboth. I've been there, I can count on one hand how many times I've been to Rehoboth. And I'm one of the people, I swear I'm going to go to the beach this year. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to definitely go there. I'll never make it, right? <laughs> but I can't say I've seen change. But now, we, to hear it, to hear about oh, it, it's, as you it's say, true. It, which is a whole lot. How does one even begin, first of all, how does one formulate the plan for such change? And then how does one implement or execute such a plan? Well, you've done it, it's, I've done it on a small scale, so then you look at it on a larger scale. Okay. And we have to create a climate uh, to either attract mm -hmm. businesses or new business or um, help keep the ones that are here, okay. if you will. There are burdensome regulations, permitting issues. Mm -hmm. We want to make a climate so it is thriving and there are jobs. And then the folks that are here, our talent, our Delawareans, will stay here and take advantage of it. Okay. Now, again, for the outside looking in, because uh, as, as I've learned today, you know, a lieutenant governor is not appointed. They're, Correct. They're elected. Correct. They're so I guess I say that to say, and, and if I'm not mistaken, you're running for the Democratic lieutenant governor. Yes. So is that to say that you could potentially be the lieutenant governor to a Republican governor? Absolutely. Yes. And every state's different. But mm -hmm. um, Delaware, you run separately and you can be a separate party. And that's happened before. Now, <laughs> what would that relationship be like? Uh, I got because, you know, of course, as a, as a political layperson, if you will, I'm mm -hmm. a caveman when it comes to lobbyists, right? <laughs> but I got to think, OK, a Republican, especially if, you, if you're looking at what's going on in our presidential debate, right? You know, mm -hmm. You're like, well, if a Republican <laughs> and a Democrat have to kind of work, and I, I'm just going to assume, let's say hand in hand, because you hear governor and you hear governor, lieutenant governor, you just assume that kind of goes one or the other, right? Kind of like boss and assistant boss or what have you. Could that create like... Could that create a big rift or any kind of kind of problems? It won't. It won't for me. Okay. Oh, I work with anybody and everybody to get results, and I've proven that. And in the city of Rehoboth, we are nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. So when I go knock on doors, I knock on voters' doors, regardless if you're Republican, Independent, or Democrat. I've run five times successfully, and I've always been the high vote getter. Okay, definitely wonderful. And now here's because I get results. There you go. Now here's something that I've noticed that you know voters or, or the general public, um, you know, community tends to often worry about too. And I say this because you mentioned door to doors, all right? Yes. And just based on what you've already done, even prior to being a Hopeless Commissioner, you know, having it in the small businesses out mm -hmm. in the community, clearly you know people in the, you know, so you're in the community. We're practically and related right here. There you go, see? <laughs> and, and, that, and now you go door to door, but now one has, one worries, okay, well, let's say she gets into office. Right. Will we no longer have in the community Kathy McGinnis? Will it just be... Uh, email my whoever person is that you got to email and maybe somebody will get back to you. No, no, mm -hmm. and no. I um I have my um f through the city. My email mm -hmm. is on the internet. Um, I answer my emails, my phone calls. Uh, I may not. I've said before. I may, we may not agree. Mm -hmm. We can agree to disagree, but okay. you're going to get at least a response. Okay. Thank you very much. I hear your concern. Mm -hmm. um, I do face to face. I was just at two constituents places on Friday. Uh -huh. You know, one has one concern about cars and parking. One had another concern. So, no, I'm available. I have been available and I will continue to be available. And people who know me know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good.